Let me start with our poll question. Russell Wilson will be the quarterback of the Seahawks, Raiders, Cowboys, Bears, Saints at the start of next season. I would say probably the Seahawks. I mean, it's not impossible. I think one thing we've learned in the NFL this year is that quarterback trades, massive quarterback trades, the kind that we used to scoff at years ago, they can happen. I mean, it's slowly becoming a little more like the NBA where people aren't afraid to take on dead money. They're not afraid to make a splash. They're not afraid to take a risk. I mean, these things have now happened. So at least this conversation that we're having now is not fake. Whereas like four years ago, I would have been like, come on, Dan. Um, but my guess is the Seahawks for a couple of reasons. One, $40 million cap hit for a team that is contending every single year is a lot. And then let's just play it out. Let's say it's the Raiders and Derek Carr's in the trade. So then it's $40 million for Russell Wilson in a you know, dead cap hit, $25 million for Derek Carr. That's $65 million allocated to the quarterback position. That's a lot. The other thing is Pete Carroll is 70 years old. Yeah. He does not want to rebuild. So if you're trading Russell Wilson, and you told me you wanted to start the dynasty again and rebuild. I'd say, cool, that actually would make some sense. Pete Carroll doesn't want to do that. A trade doesn't make sense for any party. How did we get to this point with Seattle? Well, I think it was slowly building probably from like week eight or nine when Seattle's offense went from letting Russ cook to whatever it was we saw at the end of the year. You know, he started turning it over. They kind of started focusing on running the ball to stop him from turning it over and go back to the brand of football that had made Seattle famous. And I don't think Russell Wilson liked that. He wanted to cook. He wanted to get the MVP votes. He wanted to be the kind of superstar quarterback that he is and that we see other quarterbacks. Like Aaron Rodgers, you know, the Packers run the ball with Aaron Rodgers, but Rodgers is the star. The running game is not the star, right? Um, and that was a philosophical difference in the fact that they had to play the season out and it didn't kind of get resolved during the season only led to this little, you know, kind of mini war of words or whatever you'd call it. Now he was involved in the picking of the offensive coordinator. That was good. Um, but they still got a lot of work to do to kind of get everyone on the same page here. But when he came on the show a couple of weeks ago, he, you've been around Russ. He doesn't open the door and, and really answer things honestly. And, you know, everything is go Hawks, and he wants to right. tell you all the things that you he thinks you want to hear. He opened the door for me. I And I don't know if it was off of going to the Super Bowl. He looked miserable. He's watching yeah. Mahomes yeah. and Brady and going, why am I not playing in another, another Super Bowl? But do you think that it was orchestrated on his part to allow me to ask those questions? Um, I wondered about that. Uh, it was an eye-opening interview. I will say that. Like when I, I think I first saw the clips on Twitter and I'm like, what is happening here? Yeah. I had to go and kind of click, which, you know, obviously for you, like you're doing an interview and someone has to go from Twitter to beg art, where can I find this? That's a, that's a great interview. I thought the whole thing was eye-opening. I started to get a sense before the Super Bowl that something was happening. Like I got wind of teams calling the Seahawks about Russell and I reported it on our pregame show, show before the Super Bowl. And usually you report something like that and you get a lot of pushback. Don't say anything. Don't stir it up. We don't need that out there. I didn't quite get that. It was more like, well, it's true. So you happen to find out about it. Like, okay. And that was interesting to me. And then he kind of goes on this media tour for man of the year, goes on your show and a couple others. And uh, he doesn't shy away from the fact that he's frustrated. He doesn't like to get hit, which I don't either. I get it. Um, I think it's time where he's like, you know what? I'm taking ownership of myself, my career, my team. I want this to get better. Uh, and in a way, I don't blame him, but it just makes it a little messy when that happens. But if you're Seattle, do you reach out to the Bears, the Cowboys, the Saints, the Raiders? The door's open. Yeah, the door is open. But, I mean, the reality is you have Russell Wilson. If you want to trade him, you could trade him in like two seconds, right? Like everybody would want Russell Wilson. That's not the problem. Trading him is easy. You could get three ones, two ones and a great player and another good player. Like you could get a great package for Russ Wilson. That's easy. John Schneider is the master. He could do it in two phone calls. Yeah. Um, the problem is who do you replace him with? And I think that's the problem for everyone. Like, let's say like the Houston Texans. I don't think they're trading Deshaun Watson, but let's say they do. 
fine. You get a lot of draft picks. Who is actually your quarterback for Seattle? You know, you trade Russell Wilson, unless you're taking someone of his caliber and putting him in there, you are automatically rebuilding. So how does that actually benefit the Seahawks? That's the real question.